Good evening, this is CTV News for September 5th. I'm Gina Barti. And I'm Janine Samuels. Thanks for joining us. Hurricane Dorian continues its course, wreaking havoc on the Carolinas. The storm has already devastated the Bahamas with insurmountable damage and at least 20 confirmed deaths. Officials are expecting that number to rise as relief groups search the island. While we may not feel the effects of Dorian in the county, the Office of Emergency Preparedness wants residents to know how to be ready in the event of a natural disaster. Next week, the office will hold a mini expo in Laurel. Learn how to prepare your home family and even your pet for whatever mother nature throws at us. The first step is signing up with Alert Prince George's notifications. Alert Prince George's notifies our residents of any events that are going on. If we have storm warnings uh, or watches, uh, any weather related event. So we encourage our residents to make sure they're prepared for seven days by having, or three days, I'm sorry, three days and having at least uh, a gallon of water per person per day, uh, food, uh, perishable goods preferably. Um, if they have children, make sure they have toys and items kids can play with if we lose power. If you have pets, make sure you have food and toys for your pets. The first emergency preparedness mini expo takes place next Thursday, September 12th at the Laurel Beltsville Senior Activity Center from 6 p.m. until 9 in the evening. The second will be held Thursday, September 19th at the Harmony Hall Arts Center in Fort Washington from 6 until 9 p.m. Both events are free to the public. Police identify the victim in the fatal shooting at the Glen Arden Community Center Tuesday evening. He's 29-year-old Brandon Dixon of District Heights. Police say when they arrived at the center around 9 p.m., they found Dixon suffering from gunshot wounds near the basketball court. Dixon was then taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police are still investigating the shooting. President Trump plans to cut Maryland's military budget to help fund construction of a wall on the southern border in Mexico. According to Maryland Matters, defense officials pulled the plug on three approved military projects at Joint Base Andrews and Fort Meade. The ventures, which totaled nearly $66 million, were among the 127 items cut from the budget to authorize $3.6 billion in border fencing. Governor Larry Hogan says he's not pleased with the administration decision to slash military funding. We're uh, d disappointed by these actions and just kind of take, just got this and that's all the announcement last week about the specifics but uh, you know Maryland's impacted by a couple of decisions at Fort Meade and, and Andrews Air Force Base which uh, you know we're not pleased with and we're going to be following up to see what we can do about it. Mm -hmm. In 2016 President Trump pledged that Mexico would pay for the wall. Meantime, the Trump administration also announces nearly $2 billion in federal grants will go to states and local governments across the nation to combat the opioid crisis. Maryland will receive $40.3 million, the district will receive $27 million, and Virginia will get $20.4 million. Two-thirds of overdoses in the U.S. involve some kind of opioid, a class of drugs that includes heroin, certain prescription painkillers, and fentanyl. Today, HHS is dispersing $1.8 billion in grants to help states and local communities combat our nation's crisis of opioid addiction and overdose. That includes $932 million in grants from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Addiction is a chronic disease of the brain. If you can hold your breath for 10 minutes if I ask you to do so, um, that's like telling a person to stop uh, using the substances they have a disorder for without appropriate treatment and guidance. That can mean everything from expanding the use of medication-assisted treatment in criminal justice settings or in rural areas via telemedicine to youth-focused, community-based prevention efforts, recovery supports like employment coaching, and support for the distribution of naloxone. The opioid crisis is the deadliest drug overdose epidemic in the U.S. history. 68,000 people died of overdoses last year, which is a drop from the more than 70,000 in 2017. Still